faces out to another nine. Am I right? Understanding is understanding. I want to know as much as he knows and I want to comprehend as much as he understands. The Bible says in Jeremiah chapter number nine and verse number 23, let him that boast, boast in the fact that he knows and understands me. As the righteous judge that exercises loving kindness, even judgment of curse and righteousness upon the heart. Ladies and gentlemen, we are here tonight boasting in the Spirit of God that we command the revelations of the Most High. Glory be to God. Lift up holy hands and say, I command the high revelations of God. <laughs> say, my life will never remain the same again because I'm a commander of the depths of God. Glory be to God. <laughs> uh, tonight, by the grace of God, we got to move and we got to move at the peace of the Spirit. Amen. The Lord is still further taking us on a deeper level, making us to understand His understanding. We, has, we have been on being worded. Am I right? I wish you're going to be on being worded tonight. <laughs> Come on, tell somebody, wordedness is the weight of heaviness that God has placed inside of you to change situations and to make things happen. Now, you see, when you carry God's word, you carry God. Because the word of God is God. Am I right? The Bible said in John chapter number 1, starting from verse number 1, the beginning was the word. And the word was the God, and the word was God. And so was it in the beginning that all things were made by him. And without him there was nothing made that was made. So the word of God that we are talking about, ladies and gentlemen, is the creative ability of God. When you carry the word, ladies and gentlemen, creativity should not stop in your life. You can't carry the word, ladies and gentlemen, and be frustrated and be stagnant in life. Because you become the father of ideas. <laughs> the father of creativity. I mean the father of creative imaginations. Am I talking to somebody here? The word that is coming to somebody tonight is creating a capacity for creative imaginations. <laughs> From tonight, in the name of Jesus, every aspect of you is coming up in creativity. I mean, in finance, you are becoming more creative. You are generating more resources. Uh. If you are the one I'm talking to, I think your human should be the loudest in the house. Uh. Is somebody catching what God is talking about? The Word of God is the fountain of creativity. So being water, ladies and gentlemen, it relates to we having what it takes to be able to move into new dimensions in our lives. Uh, am I talking to somebody here? There's somebody under the sound of my voice. Uh, the Spirit of God is letting me to, I mean, telling me to tell you tonight uh, that from tonight, the ideas that will move you to the next level is finally dropped in your hands. Uh, as I'm speaking, your eyes are getting open to know what to do. You have the resources, but the just a position of resources to bring about even what I call even gainful, uh, profitable uh, ventures uh, as what has been lacking. Uh, and from tonight, as you are watching me, in the name of Jesus, the illumination of God is flooding your eyes. Uh, I mean, your understanding is coming up. Uh, come on, tell somebody I'm rising in understanding. I know what to do, and I step into my next level in the name of Jesus is somebody catching what we're talking about so you see ladies and gentlemen tonight 
is still another night of illumination. The Bible said, just following what we studied last week, Wednesday, the Bible said in Hebrews chapter number 4 and verse number 2, the same word that was preached unto us. <laughs> the same word that made us mighty healers of nations. The same word that, we have, I mean, that made us even the type that we enter militias and heal militias. The same word that made us to be walking on the street and our shadows are healing the sick until all of them were healed. The same word that was given unto us uh, that even turned even our bodies uh, in, even into generators of life. Uh, that they could take handkerchiefs and aprons from us uh, and they could take it away to the sick and demons departed and their sicknesses left them. <laughs> Am I talking to somebody else? The same word that turned our lives to wonders. The Bible said the same word, not another lesser quality of word, but the same quality was preached unto them and did not profit them. So, ladies and gentlemen, the word is meant to profit. <laughs> the, ones you are, the ones you are hearing tonight is meant to profit you. I said the word you are hearing tonight is profiting somebody here. And your life profits we are crew. <laughs> Come and lift up holy and say the word is meant to profit me. You see, and I told you last week that Isaiah chapter number 48 and verse 17 says the same thing. He said, I am the Lord, the Redeemer, even the Holy One of Israel, that teacher did to profit. That means the teaching of God's word brings profiting. It brings what? When God looks at you and he begins to make some certain expositions in your direction. Now, please understand, ladies and gentlemen, if your hearts are open, you receive something now as I'm speaking. And the Spirit of Lord is telling me right now that you see the word you are speaking is parting and it's ministry unto every soul. Somebody here, you are connecting with something. <laughs> now, the Bible says that I am the Lord that teacheth thee to what? To profit and lead thee on the way thou shouldest go. That is to say, ladies and gentlemen, this is primarily the ministry of the Spirit. <laughs> this is primarily the ministry of the Spirit. He said, I am the Lord. Thus see the Lord. Can you see? Thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. Thus see the Lord. And that is the ministry of the Spirit. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter number 3 and verse number 16. In 5 verse 17. And now the Lord is the Spirit. So this is the ministry of the Spirit that teacher did to profit. So this is the ministry of the Spirit. It is the Spirit that teaches. The Bible says in John chapter 14 and verse number 26, John 14, 26, it says, And when he, the comforter, the Spirit of God shall come, he shall teach you in all things. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, he is the teacher. The Bible says, I am the Lord that teacheth thee to profit. So when the spirit is moving and is teaching, ladies and gentlemen, prophets are flying out. To the sensitive, something gainful is in his direction. For as many as will be sensitive tonight, something that will make you laugh forever is coming your direction. I am the Lord that teacheth you to what? To profit. So ladies and gentlemen, in every revelation of teaching as driven by the spirit, ladies and gentlemen, it is meant for your profiting. Now, we are not talking about being worded in terms of just carrying scriptures and loading it in your head. And all you know is just the logos. No, ladies and gentlemen, we're not talking logos. We are talking revelation here. We are talking knowing something that is not revealed to common sense. We are talking something that, ladies and gentlemen, the ordinary understanding of men cannot capture. We are talking something that it has to be by the spirit. Flesh and blood cannot come at it. Jesus said, flesh and blood has not revealed this unto you. But my Father who art in heaven. Ladies and gentlemen, we are talking about something that is proceeding from on high into your spirit. Am I talking to somebody here? Now, this revelation, when it comes, ladies and gentlemen, it causes a revolution. When he landed on Peter, he said, thou art Peter. Am I right? Matthew chapter 16. Who do you mean say I am from verse 16? You are Christ, son of God. Flesh and blood has not revealed this. But my father, you are Peter. Yeah, I mean, he said, he said thou art Peter. <laughs> Yay, Yekebo Shakata. And on this rock of revelation which you catch, will I so, 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 so build my church. And the, and the, the gate of hell shall not prevail against it. Now, that shall no longer be Simon, but Peter. <laughs> Thou shall no longer be. You see, Simon means a reed that is shaken. Instability, unprofitability. Ladies and gentlemen, all kinds of negativities are there. Because when you're a reed shaking, ladies and gentlemen, you can't excel. He said in Genesis 49, he said, you, Reuben, you want to defy my bed. He said, you are unstable as waters. Therefore, you shall not excel. They don't excel that are unstable. 
Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? In James chapter number 1, verses 6 and 7, the Bible says, When you ask, ask in faith, for a double minded man shall not receive anything from God. There is a, he can't excel. It's like a wind tossed to and fro. He can't excel in anything. Is somebody catch what I'm talking about? Now here Jesus said, Peter, your name has been that way and your destiny has been like that. To and fro. You know what I'm talking about? Neither here nor there. You have been oscillating. And Jesus said, neither cold nor hot. I will spit you out of my mouth. That means they don't have a place. They don't have a place in God. But Jesus said, I'm going to change your destiny right now. I said, from that instability, I will make it stability. I said, from that, ladies and gentlemen, that, that can be blown by wind here and there. I will make it a mighty rock that even the wind of life cannot affect anymore. I am talking to somebody here. What has been shaken about your life? What has been reversed about your destiny? I see Jesus are stabilizing it right now. Is somebody catching what God is talking about? So Jesus told him that by reason of revelation, something has happened to you. Ladies and gentlemen, then what should we go for? Revelation. What should we go for? Revelation. We are not talking logos. We are not talking just reading the Bible. We are talking about knowing the Bible. Some people said they finished the Bible in one month. Some said they finished in one year. I said that's okay. I've never studied the Bible before in my life. If I want to do critical studies, so and probably I'm able to go more than 10 verses. It doesn't matter how many hours I sit and doing. Because the revelations flowing from each verse may take me one hour to recover. From one verse, eh, it will take me almost all around the entire Bible. Do you understand? Combining Nahum with Habakkuk, mixing it with First Peter, and ending it in James, and at the same time going to the book of Revelation and landing it in Matthew. Do you understand what I'm talking about? You see, no, we finish it in one year, and some people have said, I've read the Bible 45 times. It doesn't mean you command the greater revelation. Do you understand what I'm talking about? The Bible says he has made us able ministers. Not of the letter, but of the spirit, brother. <laughs> ah, for the letter killer. That means to carry the logo, he's poisonous. So he can expose your destiny to havoc and expose you to the greatest hazard in life. Because you will think you know why you don't know. I don't know whether I'm talking to somebody here. He said, for the Lord that kill it. <laughs> but there is something that gives a life. <laughs> it's called the Holy Ghost. He said, the Spirit gives a life. <laughs> Am I talking to somebody here? So when you have the Spirit dimension of revelation inside of your spirit, ladies and gentlemen, there is a revolution there. I said, there is a change there. Am I talking to God's people this evening? So ladies and gentlemen, what I need to go for is a revelation. Is what? It's a revelation. And that's what, what is called light. That means the word is, is an exposed state to you. And it's a privilege that we have, ladies and gentlemen, the teaching grace of God in the house. Because every time, ladies and gentlemen, you have the teaching grace, it exposes you. It gives you a revelation of what you need to know to take you to your next level. Somebody's craving, he's been answered tonight. I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> the spirit of revelation is in the house. Can we appreciate God for that? Can we appreciate God for that? Oh, glory be to God in the highest. Is somebody catching what God is talking about? So when that spirit is on the house, ladies and gentlemen, we connect. How do I connect? Let me quickly share this with you. Number one is in prayers. Is in what? Is in prayers. When you pray a lot, you command revelations. Because prayers, a lot of times, orders the ministry of the spirit. Prayers connects you with the ministry of the Spirit. I told you several the ministry of the Spirit is connected to prayers. The ministry of the Spirit is primarily connected to prayers. So whatever the Spirit is the one doing, most times prayers get it done. Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? The Bible said when they were praying in the upper room, Acts chapter 1 verse 14, and they were continued in prayers, the Holy Ghost came down. Am I right? Well, when did the Holy Ghost come on, on, on the Lord Jesus Christ? Luke chapter 3. Verses 21 and 22. And as he came out from the waters where he was baptized, and he was praying, the heavens were open, and the spirit descended. Right? You see upon him. You see, ladies and gentlemen, anytime men are praying, you see the spirit of God moving. That is it. The ministry of the spirit largely connected to prayers. It's largely connected. It's a haxi of the Lord. Zechariah chapter 10 verse 1. Rain in the time of the latter rain. And the Lord shall make bright clouds. He said, and shall give rain unto every one grass. Can you remember? So you see, ask ye. When men are praying, the spirit moves. Joel chapter 2 from verse 15. He said, blow the trumpet in Zion. 
sanctify her first. Let the bridegroom come out of his chambers, even and the, and, the, and, the, and the bride, even from her closet. He said, oh my goodness, let the priest wait between the porch and the altar. Let them say, oh Lord, don't give her even your, your heritage to a reproach. He said, then shall the Lord be jealous and the following will begin to happen. Verse 28, I will pour out my spirit upon the flesh. So when they begin to proclaim a fast and pray, God said, I will pour out. And they did that in Acts chapter 1, and God poured out. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, there is nothing a promise that he doesn't do. Tonight you will find him faithful. Amen. I said tonight somebody will find him faithful. Is somebody catch what I'm talking about? So if I can pray, ladies and gentlemen, I get the ministry of the Spirit moving. The Bible said they prayed also in Acts chapter number 4. The next thing the Bible said, verse 31, and where they prayed, shook, and they were all filled with what? With the Holy Ghost. See, ladies and gentlemen, anytime men pray, the ministry of the Spirit is connected with. Do you understand what I'm talking about? So if you want to walk in the Spirit a lot, be a prayer mantis. Just be blowing in the Spirit a lot. That is a key for somebody. That is a key for somebody. Somebody has been asking God, Lord, I want to walk in the supernatural. Lord, I want certain dimensions of spiritual activities in my life. Ladies and gentlemen, just be praying in tongues a lot. You will just be seeing a lot happening. Hear a lot happening. Hear a lot happening. Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? When you speak in tongues, a lot of miracles happen. That's what happens. The ministry of the Spirit goes into action. Glory be to God in the highest. Is somebody catching what God is talking about? So tonight, ladies and gentlemen, when we pray, we command revelations of the Spirit. He is the teacher. And that means, the, 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 the teaching ministry there means the word coming to you in exposed state. That means you are not receiving the latter. You are receiving the spirit of the word. That means it's coming as illumination. It's coming as light. Do you understand what I'm talking about? So as we are seeing it like this, you know, when there is light, men see. Am I right? So your eyes will be open to catch something. In Ephesians chapter number 1, but Paul the Apostle was talking about this from verse 15. He said, ever since we heard of your faith, in the Lord Jesus Christ and your love for all the saints. We've never ceased giving thanks unto God for you, remembering you always in our prayers. That the God of glory and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ may grant unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelations through his knowledge. And your eyes of understanding may be enlightened that you may know. Can you see it? So the moment, ladies and gentlemen, somebody is praying, said we've never ceased praying. Remembering you in our prayers, that this following may begin to happen. So when people begin to pray, ladies and gentlemen, the anointing of the Holy Ghost begins to flood your eyes. It begins to remove all the skates. And it begins to cause you to see. The Bible says, Brother Ananas came to Brother Paul. <laughs> Chapter number 9. He said, the Lord told me to come to you to come and lay hands on you. That you may regain your sight. Not just sight. The Bible says when he laid hands on him, he was filled with the Holy Ghost and the scale in his eyes fell. See, ladies and gentlemen, that means from this day now, the spirit of revelation is, is given. He said, I came to lay hands on you to pray for you <laughs> that you may. Now, the, you see, and from that day, but I brought the apostle caught that spirit. The Bible said, but Paul was speaking in 2 Corinthians chapter number 12, starting from verse number 1. He said, how we come to visions and revelations of the Lord. I don't know who I'm speaking to you from tonight. You are a man of visions. You are a woman of revelations. <laughs> Lift up only and say, I command visions and revelations. He said, these things are things that are battered by the Spirit. And this brother Paul, you know, he enhanced this grace by, by praying himself. In 1 Corinthians chapter number 14 and verse number 18, Brother Paul the Apostle was speaking. 1 Corinthians 14 and verse 10. He said, I speak in tongues more than ye all. That is to say, the combined effect of the speaking in tongues of the saints, even in Corinth, is not up to the speaking in tongues of Paul alone. That means he was a dangerous tongue. <laughs> Am I talking to somebody here? There's a grace coming on somebody here tonight. All through the night, you see yourself praying in the Holy Ghost. <laughs> I say, all through the day, walking by the street, walking on the street, you see yourself praying in the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Mama, in the kitchen, you are speaking in tongues. <laughs> Sir, in the city, room you are speaking in tongues wherever you see yourself in the name of Jesus you are making it happen blowing it in the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus is somebody catching what I'm talking about so when men begin to speak that way ladies and gentlemen the spirit of revelation is given unto them so it is connected to prayers connected to what that's why brother Paul the apostle was praying even for the Colossians church in Colossians chapter number one and verse number nine he said unto them that of course the same way since we have heard of your love and your faith, he said we pray for you that God may fill you with the spirit of, 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 of with, with, his, with the knowledge of his will through all spiritual wisdom and understanding. That's spirit of revelation. 
That means you begin to have revelations so clear about Christ. And this revelation, you see, Brapona enumerated, you see, he said that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will. That's revelation. His will revealed to you. He said, he said, he said, he said, through all spiritual wisdom and revelation. He said that, can you see, so that this may happen. That means this won't happen until revelation comes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's somebody here tonight as I'm speaking, scales are falling. As I'm speaking, scales are falling. Now hear this. He said that you may live a life worthy of the Lord. That means your Christianity will never maintain a proximity with the hard desires of God until you are a man and a woman of revelation. Am I talking to somebody here? That you may live a life worthy of God, being fruitful in every good work. Can you see? He said abounding in good works. Can you see? He said living a life worthy of God, fruitful in every good work, filled with the knowledge of, of God. He said, he said, he said even being strengthened with power according to his glorious mind. So even power is inside this thing. Brother, if you can catch revelation, you can walk in power. A man of God was praying for power fasting and God just took him to Acts 1.8. He said, and thou shalt receive power when the Holy Ghost has come upon thee. Uh -huh. Then shall thou be my witness. He said, immediately I saw that revelation and stopped praying. I'm telling you, he said that means if I be a witness, the power I receive when the Holy Ghost came will start manifesting. Do you understand? He said, I just carried my Bible and I went out and I started preaching. I'm telling you, you need to see that man ministering today. When he's ministered, there's somebody here. You have a high condition, so, 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 so. Word of knowledge sharp. He said, you are healed. The person will come and healed. He said, there's somebody that you have, you have, you have, you have, you have cancer. It's on your left breast. You've done an operation before. You're about to do another one now. The person will come out. He said, you have, you don't appreciate it. He said, you, I said, you, have to, you, have to, you have to do next, on Monday, tomorrow. He said, you are healed. And that's it. The person will come back to say, everything disappeared. So many. I've listed to him severally. See, he said, the source of my power was not fasting and praying. He said, I caught it from that verse. Ah, I'm talking to somebody here. <laughs> Revelation will strengthen you with power. There is a power called financial power. Revelation will strengthen you with it. <laughs> I said, there is a power called financial power. <laughs> I am speaking by the Spirit. Revelation right now is strengthening somebody in that direction. I see that power delivered by revelation. If you are the one receiving, let him be the most robust in the house. So in the place of prayers, ladies and gentlemen, men catch revelations. <laughs> so prayer is one major link to what? To revelations. The second way to revelation, ladies and gentlemen, many believers don't know. Maybe tonight God is adding it to somebody's knowledge. Is your giving? Is your what? Write it. Write it down. You have been asking God, who shall I marry? You have been asking God, Lord, which job should I take? You have been asking God, where should I tender my application? You have been asking God, which business should I gravitate towards? You are asking God, Lord Jesus, which of these girls or which of these houses should I employ? Or which of these sales girls should I employ? Which of these, which of that? Ladies and gentlemen, you don't need to struggle. Revelation can come through your giving. Many believers don't know that. <laughs> if you see a giver, an handsome, delighted giver, ladies and gentlemen, you see a man walking in hotmost revelations. Because naturally, giving provokes even light on your eyes. That's the reason why I don't play with giving. <laughs> those who know me, those who are close to me, they know. <laughs> because I have discovered it's a major source of... That's the reason why you are talking and the thing is coming to pass. Do you know, a man just... You were there, brother. A man just come before I came here now. You're upstairs. I was praying with him about two weeks ago, three weeks ago. I said, I see you. God said he's giving you a house. I'm so, so, so. The man just said, Pastor, I just want to tell you this. The, what you told us has come to pass. God just gave us a house in the Kui. Not uh, rented, though. They are home. He said, God, they, didn't, they told me when they said, Pastor, they didn't have the money. I said, God says, giving you a house. He's, were you not there when he said it? Ah. He said, God just gave us a house in Ikoyi. Now, you see, how Pastor Bao will, he will you will see it me because you are in command of revelations. Do you understand what I'm talking about? He said, Revelation causes light to flow. I'm talking to somebody here by the power of the Spirit of God. You are coming into realms where, and you know what, the revelation should be seen. There is a higher realm, of, is, a revel, is a revelation that there is something in front of you naturally that you can get there, and you get it. There is another revelation that is not in front of them, but God is showing you because of your anointing and you are speaking, it is being created in front of them. That is the level I operate. Do you understand what I'm talking about? So please understand, there, is a, there are realms in this thing. Your giving nature will provoke that flow in your life. Oh, come on, I'm talking to somebody here. 
<laughs> a couple came to see me. Uh, 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 they are watching me now. God bless you, Pastor, from Abiyakura. They came to see me a couple of days ago. Uh, that should be Monday, right? You directed them to my house. They came last year. The wife was pregnant. I said, ah, this pregnancy, I see a boy in your belly. He said, but there is a congenital abnormality. I said, the Lord said I should pray about it. <sighs> okay. They then said, didn't know anything. I lay hands there. Then I went for tests. They told them that water fluid has occupied the brain of the child. So they born the child with fluid in the brain. And of course, that is Mongo. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the, they told me how the power of God surged into the situation. And God took away everything, cleaned the boy up. I saw the boy on Monday, Jesus. I've never seen a boy as perfect and as bouncy as that boy. <laughs> Carry the boy like this, eh? Perfect baby. Hey! Very chubby, very handsome, very playful. Was playing with me. Normal, balance. No disability, no reliability, no upability, no downability. Everything perfect. Don't, 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 don't argue it. Somebody glorify God in the house. Now, what showed me that thing? The man looked at me, just gave me 100,000. I said, you're a correct man of God. Take <laughs> That's the kind of thing. So what showed you the revelation? And God went to confirm. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Please understand. If you want to walk in revelations, this is how it works. Giving is a major part. In Isaiah chapter number 39, I share with you a deep secret. Isaiah chapter number 39. The Bible said, and Ezekiah had just recovered from his sickness. We all know the story, right? How he recovered from his sickness. Eh? How many people know the story? Ezekiah that God said you should prepare his son and he will die. And he will say, Lord, how shall I die? Uh -huh. Now he recovered. Please project Isaiah 39. Now, Merodash Baladan, the king of Babylon, heard about it. And he sent his men unto, unto, unto Isaiah. I'm sorry, unto Ezekiah. And when these people came, they came with present. Correct gold and silver. I mean, they came with present. They came with what? They came with what? Abba, please project this, Isaiah 39. Uh -huh. Now, they came with present. Now, verse number two. The Bible said when the man collected present, he showed them all his treasure houses. The Bible said, and he took them where they have the spices, the hoyers, the precious hoyers, the silver, the gold, the everything. And the Bible said, and there was nothing in his entire kingdom that did not show them. Present can open everything about someone to you. I'm talking to somebody here. I said, giving can open everything, everything, everything in revelations unto you. Whatever is eating, you know, treasure, treasures are not on the surface. If you, if you want to see correct treasure, if you go to a bank, eh, they, there's a room they call strong room, am I right? Is it paper they keep there? Listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. Is it rags they keep there? Please understand, is it your hairdo that the one that you remove and you say you are not using attachment again, that's the one they keep there? Answer me now. What do you find there? Dollars. <laughs> oh my goodness, don't call money anymore. For Nigerians now, when you say dollar, dollar is higher than money. <laughs> Why they keep their brother? <laughs> Dollars. You see pounds sterling there, am I right? You see euro there, am I right? And then some other currency there too, am I right? <laughs> and others. <laughs> and uh, as, as, a, as a currency. <laughs> you see that? <laughs> I'm not talking to somebody here. So please understand, ladies and gentlemen. They call it strong room because there are treasures to keep. A treasury is always a secure place. Am I right? Somebody said when you get to go uh, go soak in Dubai, he said, he said, once you enter like this, you will see policemen in front. Am I right? He said that tells you they are selling original gold there. Ah. The person told me Yoruba when I've not, I mean in Nigeria, when I've never, never, never traveled before then. He said that is a place to know that this, they sell original gold there. You will see. That means there is a treasure here. That's why the police are there to keep them. Am I talking to somebody here? Please understand, ladies and gentlemen. The Bible said the king opened everything when gold and silver was presented to him. Present. I say present. I say present. But in Shaya relation Shorong. In Revelations and Romans chapter 1, verse 20, the Bible says the invisible things of God are clearly seen. And they are understood by the physical things that we see. It will open any hidden thing that the person has been hiding for ages past. Agbejadi. The man showed them everything. Because why? Present came. That's the truth. The Bible said in 1 Kings chapter number 10, a particular woman by the name Queen of Sheba came unto Solomon. 
And the, from verse 1, please project. And when the queen of Sheba came, the queen of Sheba brought precious ointment, gold, silver, talents of gold, silver, and all that to Solomon. A whole lot. The Bible said when Solomon collected. <laughs> the Bible says Solomon and the woman said, I have questions. Eh? And I asked you all your questions. The Bible says Solomon showed, showed, him, showed her everything that is in her heart. Everything. Is, do you understand? And there was nothing that Solomon did not show her. That's what the Bible said. That means it went to the fullest, deepest realm. Do everything. All the wisdom, all the counsel, all everything. Baba, he revealed everything to her. They took the woman around as well. The woman saw her house, saw everything. The Bible said the woman fainted. There was no breath left in her. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Please understand, ladies and gentlemen. There is a realm that gifts can open up to you. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 18, verse number 16, no wonder. He said, the gift of a man make it room. There are dimensions that gifts can open up for you. Is there a room you want to enter in life? Lord, give me direction. Show me the way to head, to wealth. I mean, give. You will see God opening it up. Give a well-targeted offering towards that direction. Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? Ladies and gentlemen, he opens up the treasury rooms of God unto a man. The Bible said in 1 Kings chapter number 3, there was a man by the name Solomon. The Bible said in verse 4 that he went to Gibeon and he raised a thousand offering unto God. God said, nobody has done this before. Nobody has done this before. And the Bible said, the next line, and the Lord appeared. Revelation is straight. Revelation, you can know. Straight in it. And the Lord appeared unto Solomon. <laughs> he said, just ask me anything. <laughs> Solomon said, I just need to, just, just to govern this people. You know what God did? God went to the archives of heaven. Now, please understand, there is a dimension that had never been revealed in time past. And this dimension is called wisdom, knowledge, understanding, eating in God. <laughs> it's eating. Remember, when Brother Paul, the apostle God, was talking about this, he talked about it in Colossians chapter number 3, verse 2. He said, Christ Jesus, in whom is hid, even the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. So those are the treasures of God. Those are the things God doesn't play with. They are the riches of the Most High. Is somebody catch what I'm talking about? Now, when is a treasure, there is a treasure there. There is, is the Bible says heat in Christ. So, Allah, God taught you a sinu Jesu from the foundation of the world. Ni? Is somebody catch up? Allah, Lord, Bejad, you know, in Solomon, come and take. What, no matter how he did. Ah, Abraham prayed. Pray, I'm talking to somebody here. <laughs> but Isaac prayed too. But Joseph was a holy man. And what purity called? You know what I'm talking about? God said the type that nobody before you has had. And then you again go see. Ah, that is unique. That means it's reserved. It's somewhere. It's hidden. You don't want wisdom to allow hidden here in Christ. <laughs> Which, ladies and gentlemen, are now made known unto you and I. <laughs> Glory be to God. <laughs> Can we celebrate God? Can we celebrate God in the house? <laughs> is somebody catching what God is talking about? You see, this depth of revelation, ladies and gentlemen, the Bible says, the man gave. And God said, you know what? <laughs> I give you this. And the man began to write. I mean, he wrote Proverbs. He wrote several things. He wrote several songs. He wrote several... Proverbs also wrote, is it 3,000 songs or something? 1,000 hymns or something? He wrote a whole lot. Many were not compiled in the Bible. Many were not seen. Do you understand what I'm talking about? He spoke so many Proverbs, the Bible said. The wisdom was so outstanding. That, ah, the Bible said it was like the largeness of the sand of the seashore. <laughs> First Kings chapter 4, verse 29. Now, you see, the man entered that realm, ladies and gentlemen, by giving. Eh? Giving will make him show you all the hidden treasures of his house in his realm. Let's walk. And he begins to show you. He you petroleum. He you kingdom wet. Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? Can a Copeland was struggling with finance, ladies and gentlemen, struggling with finance. Kenneth Copeland would not move. His church also will not move. And God now gave him a revelation that why don't you sow this thing? Go and give. And then he went to give. The church member wanted to tear into pieces. He said, who are you? All what we have been saving for the past 10 years, 15 years. He will also wear. Kenneth Copeland, after he sold the thing, uh, the devil battered with that man. His trouser had two pockets. <laughs> I've told you before. They patched it to the point until it became one giant pocket. <laughs> until nothing could be patched anymore. Do you understand what I'm talking about? And this man was, <laughs> ah, he suffered. Ah, he suffered. After he gave, 
he now went to Kenneth Egan's ministry again. He said, please, Papa Egan, please, I, I, I want to, he had a rickety car. Go, 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 go. He said, I want to sow my car. He went to Kenneth Egan's ministry. He said, I want to sow my car. So, secretary told Papa Egan, and he said, there's a man here who wants to sow his car. And he said, the money, he said, whatever value they derived there, maybe the music can give him some tips as well so that he can go and listen to it. Ha, Papa Egan said, praise God. God just made our knees, man. We just got a new, we just got a car in this ministry. Where well, Papa Egan came out to come and inspect, where he saw the car, he said, he said, we don't take this kind of car in this ministry. <laughs> he said, we are sorry. We don't use this kind of car. In the, don't introduce poverty to this ministry. So, and he told him, he said, please, he saw the genuineness of his car. He said, give him all the tapes he want and let him go with his car. Can I, Papa Egan did not know he was sowing the seed to bring out the richest man in the body of Christ. <laughs> After my home said, you know what I'm talking about? Pa so the guy sold everything, sold his land, sold it. He just carried the tape, went and started listening, started listening, started listening. And he caught revelations of prosperity so hard. Ladies and gentlemen, he came out. Somebody came, he said, I want, God told me to come and sow this money into your ministry. The man just went to go into one bush, bush, what I call it? And they went to, God told him, this is this bush. He said, go and buy it. And he bought it. He did not know what was there. He bought the bush. Some geologists there, ladies and gentlemen, they discovered petroleum. <laughs> That's how the guy is just giving out jets like, like water. <laughs> is someone catch what I'm talking about? You see, he never entered that realm until he, he, he entered into dangerous giving. And then God began to show him the things that were hidden from the faces of men. Remember that petroleum is not on the surface. It's in tanks, man. But God will show you. He will begin to lead you. He will begin to guide you. How many want to walk in revelations? It is in prayers and it is in giving. Let's rise to your feet and give God all the praise. Oh, somebody just give him all the praise. Worship him tonight. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, prodish the kataya kredish to the sticker. The kusha kataya gabara katasta. Oh, rato sato yagaba shakata yagaba shakari de dishta. La pot sete yagabo shakata. Wherever you are, give him praise. Magnify his holy name for his word being unfolded unto you every time. Magnify his holy name. Are you Lord of creations? Call you God.
two years ago the lady went to open a house in Lake is one two years ago and then she came to see me this year she's watching me right now and I gave her the word God said all debts are cancelled from your neck now she bought the house with a loan 70 million naira an apartment and then God said all debts are cancelled from your neck ladies and gentlemen the lady came to meet me to tell me today that the supernatural cancelled the debt he said this is the papers of my house everything fully honed now no debt now how can you buy in two years you pay on a house then he said and the god looked at her she was wallowing in it he said just some months ago you told me he said debt are cancelled from my neck he said i'm here only a penny more what do he said i am here only just like the ten lepers he said only one came to give time he said i am here to give thanks he said just as you said that debt was cancelled he said, now I am debt free. I own my house fully, 100%. Please understand, the power of God is about to move right now, wherever you are. You are watching me online. There is a power moving right now. Whatever is that concern, the power is lifting it now. Amen. You are going to take that bread and break it and heat it and pray in the Holy Ghost. Somebody do in the name of Jesus. Mashota yagaba, shakata yagaba, alakbara. concerns as I command you fly up now if you like you may take that position I'll even demonstrate it physically now you know we are not waiting here wedding best on Sunday am I right yes, sir. can I tell you this the couple are, they are watching me now they came to see me two weeks ago I like that man he's a man of faith he lost his job last year over a year ago probably I don't know how yeah, one year six months ago one year eight months ago now met my daughter maybe about uh, three four months ago they started or five months ago they start about six months ago they started the relationship the guy had no job no penny so my daughter said unto me pastor i want you to pray for him so that he can get a job and the guy said he wants to marry he said god showed him the revelations go and marry. i said ah, when i had it, i said how can you go and marry when you don't have a job because scriptures was flowing in my heart straight 
Ah, the Bible said, give him a job to dress the garden before he got a wife. Uh, uh, Genesis chapter 2, verse 14. I said, which kind of uh, leading is that one? And the Holy Spirit said, shut up. I said, if he has the faith, why not? Okay. I said, I approved the wedding. Ah, the two of them were happy. I said, go and marry. So he said, but pastor, he must get a job. He doesn't have a job. We are going to marry. It became a serious concern. And my daughter want to back, wanted to back out because of that. Now listen. I said, send him to come and see me. He said, yes, sir. And the guy came. Two weeks ago. The guy called me around 12 midnight. <laughs> Luru, around 12 midnight. And my daughter called me around 5.30 this morning. Now hear what happened. Today is their court wedding. Hear what happened. As I lay hands on him, I said, so you are about to do your wedding now. I said, what do you want? I said, it's job, sir. I said, I will not only give you one job. I will give you two. And the two will come before you wait. <laughs> I lay hands on him. Bass, he received it. So he got up. Now, he called me 12 minutes. I said, Pastor, my former place of work called me that I should resume back with immediate affair, full salary. I said, is it contract? He said, no, full employment. He said, another company also gave me another full employment, making two. He said, I said, is that not what God told us? He said, that was what God told us two weeks ago when you came. I said, is, is it, has it come to pass? He said, Pastor, it came to pass exactly. He said, and you know what? Today is our wedding. He said, everything came to pass before the wedding, as the Lord said. Now, I, the last one was coming to pass yesterday. The other I'm talking about. Now, I don't care what you are going through. As I command, jump up now. Every destiny that has been tied down will fly up. Every destiny that has bowed by the power and the authority of the Spirit, you will see that destiny rolling and skyrocketing into the sky. Yeah. By the power of the Spirit of the living God, jump up now! Yeah. In the name of Jesus, I release every tied down destinies in the name of Jesus. I release every tied down destiny in the name of Jesus. From now, begin to walk in the victory light of power. Of power, of power, of power. As I say to you, that is how it will be. As you are leaving this place, receive cars, receive houses, receive favor, receive increase, receive magnitude of His grace. Let me have the let me have the wine. Majana and then they took the wine. He said, "For this is the New Testament, and my blood poured out for you." As many as are watching me online, as you are taking this, those on the ground are taking it. By the power of God, everything that is inside of you becomes reconfigured. This is the last time you will ever feel that pain. Mark that word. That disease disappears immediately. It is power. <laughs> Say it is power. Say it is power. Say it is power. Take it in the name of Jesus. You are taking in power. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, rain, Jesus. Everybody just lift up holy hands and glorify him for what he just accomplished here tonight. I'm telling you, terrific miracles just happened right now. Rain, Jesus. Somebody say, rain, rain. We believe you have been blessed by this message. For more information, prayers, and counseling, you can reach us on the following numbers 080 33 706 938 and 080 28 28 1839. Or visit our website at www.dgccinternational.org and connect with us on our social media platforms, facebook.com forward slash DGCCINTL, Instagram at DGCCINTL, on YouTube, search Divine Glory Christian Church. Our Twitter handle is at DGCCINTL. Stay blessed.